Hi guys, Mr. Matt here. Uh, I'm going to do a realistic art project this week. Just like last week when we were working on the uh, realistic pencil landscapes, um, we're going to kind of keep forging ahead. Whoops, that's upside down. <laughs> forging ahead with this uh, realism idea, but we're going to do it with color. So with colored pencil rather than just pencil. So this is just a con colored pencil still life. Um, as I explained in the Microsoft Word document, a still life is just a collection of objects or even a single object that artists draw uh, both for practice in drawing and painting but also as a finished work of art. In museums all over the world you'll see paintings and drawings of, of objects. It's, it's, uh, it's what, what's done. So anyway, uh, it's nice if you have an actual object to look at to draw. Like I was going to do this mug but we really want something that's plain and simple. And uh, the, the mug has a little logo on it. You know, I, if I could just do the reddish brown mug without that, and maybe I'll work on this and just not include that, but I kind of really want to do a Lego block. Now, I don't have any Lego blocks in the house, but I was able, through the magic of the internet, uh, to get a simple image of a Lego block. This is an eight button blue block. And I'm gonna work on drawing that. I'm gonna enlarge it and draw it in colored pencil so that it looks real. Okay, so uh, without any delay, I will change views and show you how I'm going to get started on this. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you my setup quick. Um, because I'm not working with an, an actual object, I'm working with a, a photo, a printed picture of the object. I just taped it above where I'm going to draw on my drawing table. So now I'll kind of zoom in on my paper. And uh, I'm going to start with pencil so I can erase and just get the the line drawing part of this done. I'm using my paper horizontally or uh, landscape view because the block is longer than it is tall. So anyway, uh, this is a little bit of linear perspective. We have some parallel lines. Put one here. I mean, you could use a ruler. I like just sketching myself is how I'm going to do this. Uh, sometimes I use my pencil to get the angle. It's about like that, so that comes down this to about here. It's going to be probably a little hard for you guys to see these lines because they're like sketchy lines, but later on, once I kind of figure out where everything is supposed to be, I can darken these so that you'll, you'll be able to see it better. There, that's that face of it. Now we have a line that goes, turn my paper, looks like it goes like this. Okay, um, again, that's probably going to be hard for you to see because of how lightly I'm sketching. I'm going to stop this, bring it back after I have a little bit more of the Lego sketched in with darker lines so you can see. Okay, so this is proving a little trickier than I first thought when I printed out this Lego block. <laughs> um, I darkened some lines in and I worked on trying to figure out where a couple of the little buttons are. The little cylinder, that's all that is, that shape is just a cylinder. Uh, that's on top and there's eight of them. So looking at my photo, I don't think my block is long enough to fit four and four. So I'm probably going to need to move the back of this. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to 
first kind of figure out where where they are. So I'll show you. Let me darken this one. You know, things like this you can gradually do as you figure out where things are. One of the things I adjusted is uh, I made this a little narrower because in the photo, this back button is overlapped by this one, and I couldn't get them to do that, so I had to make it narrower to make it overlap like what I see in the in the photo. So I kind of fought with that a little bit, and I got it to work. So now that I have two of them in, I'm going to figure out where the next two are, and then after that, the next two, and then after that, the next two, and then, then I'll make the adjustment to the back of the block when I get there. So look at the, the picture. The space between the buttons is less than the width of a button, but uh, I can do from this one here, looks like it's about right there. So I do the vertical part, and then I start to do, I can see that it sticks up past this edge of the block. Then I do the top, which is an ellipse. An ellipse is just a circle that's on its ang you know, on an angle, so it looks like an oval. So I can kind of get that in. Looks like it should be about like that. And you want them to be the same. Like this one that I do should be pretty much the same as the next door neighbor here. So I try to make it about the same size and shape. Because if they're different, it's not gonna look not gonna look real. And then this follows. This line should be kind of parallel to that one there. It follows like that. I notice this one's a little different, so I'm going to change this, bring it more like that. There. And now this one's going to get overlapped again by the one underneath it, so I can figure out where that's supposed to be. That's going to be a little bit past halfway, and it should be about here. And we want part of that to cover that one. And this one should kind of match the one behind it. So I work on trying to trying to get it to look like that. starting to get there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video. I'll bring it back when I have more of the buttons drawn in and I'll uh, kind of show you how I'm going to have to extend this block to make them all fit. Okay, so I've got more of this drawn in. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, don't underestimate the Lego brick. This is a challenge to get it right. So I see now that this last one uh, moves. Before, this one was lined up with about the middle of that one. And the next one, it moves a little bit past center. This one moves even further past center, and this one moves almost to the outside edge. So it should be somewhere in here. Should be the vertical part. And then this kind of misses now the cylinder. I'm going to turn my paper so I can get it. That oval, I want to make it about the same size. other part on. Maybe I want this to be... Yeah, no, that's right. Oh, I'm going to have to adjust that line. I'm just going to leave the button and adjust the other line under it there. There. So now, to make this work, I'm actually going to take this line and bring it 
down a little bit. Pass there. There. And I can adjust this one. Eh, maybe I'll leave that one alone. I can bring it down a little bit. Like that. Now, it goes a little bit past the button to about there. And then we have this. Right. This comes down to meet that corner. And then this disappears behind there. This comes out about here. I'm going to draw it through it, and then I'm just going to darken in that part and darken in that part. I don't even really need to worry about erasing it because I'm gonna I'm gonna do colored pencil over all this. I can erase that a little bit, and I can darken some of these lines um, so you can see a little better my ellipses. But I pretty much have the whole Lego brick uh, drawn in, which was a challenge. But like anything that's worthwhile, you gotta you gotta fight for it. But anyway, I'm going to stop this uh, and start to talk about applying color. Okay, so I picked out the, the pencils that I was going to use. And if you look, I made some test marks next to the block uh, to test them out. And I found out that this one here, I don't see that really in any... <laughs> it's hard to see there. In any of, uh, of the block. But So I, I found out what colors I do need, and I'll be using those. So really it's just a couple of blues, a purple, and a black. And you can adjust things uh, in terms of tone by how hard you push. I found one little correction in here. I actually want to move this bottom line up to here. So I'll just take an eraser and kind of get that out of there. And that kind of exaggerates the, the perspective. It makes it look like the block's kind of coming at you. But now I am ready to, uh, to apply some color. So if I was going to work on like this side of the block right here, I could use, uh, I'm going to start with this dark blue along the bottom, put that in with kind of a medium pressure. It's always good to go light to start. You can always make things darker by going back over it and pushing harder, but if you, if you push really hard on your first application, it's it's a challenge to, to lighten that. You can, and some of you have figured this out that you, uh, from <laughs> mistakes that have happened in other art projects, and that's how you learn. Um, that you can erase colored pencil a little bit, stress a little bit. You can't really erase it that much, but I'm gonna go switch to this lighter blue now, because that side of the, of the Lego kind of gets lighter as it goes up. And bring that across. And I see these things in the photo. It's it's dark and that edge, and it kind of gets lighter as it goes up. Now, I do notice that I want to try to keep this tone the same as I bring it all the way over to here. So I'm going to go back and rework that, but I real quick, just to show you the contrast here, this side is darker than that side. So I'm going to go back to this blue, and I'm going to put this in here, but I'm going to push a little harder, and it's really going to create that edge. So rather than your edge really being made with a line, it's going to be made by the difference between a lighter tone and a darker tone is going to really make that line. And then I'm going to fill this whole side pretty much with that, this tone of blue. So I'll stop the video and come back when I have that complete, and then we'll start working on the top. Okay, so I got uh, those two sides in. Um, after I got it in, I noticed that uh, this side is maybe a little bit light. So I'm going to go over this, this blue with the darker blue, but just kind of with light pressure. Just to darken that a little bit so it's closer to this blue, but not, not too dark. So they're a little closer. 
kind of like that. Maybe I can darken this a little bit. This side is, I made it a little darker towards the corner and bottom and this back corner in the middle, but uh, that's good for now. Now if I start working on the top, we have uh, the lightest parts. There's actually kind of a dark line here, a little bit of a corner line that's kind of dark. And then the top is just as light as, as this, if not lighter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that light blue. And again, I'm going to start really light because I can go back and darken it later. I don't want to go too dark at first. And I'm just going to kind of put that around these buttons. Change directions. Also, this is going to go on top. Now, the, the Lego words are, are in the photo are on top of the buttons. I'm not going to include that. That's a level of complication and detail that I don't want for this. But I'm just going to put this light blue on top of these buttons. Now, in the photo, we have some other things happening on the sides of the cylinder, some dark spots and shadows. And that's where you're going to make things look real. So it doesn't really look like anything yet, but it will when I'm done. So now that I have that in, I'm going to start with this dark blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of a line on the edge there and along this bottom. And pretty much this line too. And then we have, it kind of starts here and kind of works its way out wider, this really dark area. Like that. And then I'm going to uh, lighten up my pressure in these other areas. So it's still this dark blue, but it's a lighter tone of it because I'm, I'm using less pressure. Looks like it sh really should be a little darker over on this side. There. And it looks like maybe there's kind of a, this dark, I can kind of outline that almost with. Let me bring a little bit of it around this back part of the button. Now that's starting to look like something. Okay. Um, I could even, you know, go in and add a little bit of this purple into those really dark areas. And then that's going to darken that down. I could try that in these spots too where I want it to be really really dark. Also it's a nice idea to go two directions like if I go this way I want to go the other way too. Kind of like cross hatching with, with pen and ink. Feed a little bit of this into here and gradually it's going to start to look like something. So I'll stop the video and bring it back when I have a little bit more of this done and then talk about some of the shadows that I see in there. All these little details that will make this look real. Okay, I'm having some success with these little buttons, getting them to look kind of like what I have in the photo. Um, I put in these little cast shadows. The Lego block is, you know, shiny plastic, so you get these almost reflection type uh, shadows. Because of where the light source is, there's a shadow of the button there in the photo, so I'm showing that. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to go back and do now is with a purple... And I'm going to do uh, some black. I'm going to really, really darken the dark spots of this part of the, of the button. And some of that, I might kind of almost feather into this reflection shadow. So do the same thing over here, nice and really dark. And kind of feather it into part of the shadow a little bit there, at the bottom of it. I'm going to go back with, uh, with some black. And... Do that even, even more along this bottom edge. Darken that up into there. And over here, where I want it to be really dark. Same thing on this one. I can bring it down the side edge over here along the bottom of it. There. And I can, I can almost kind of feather it into the reflection a little bit. Yeah. 
So you want to exaggerate these things. I could, I could add a little bit to the bottom edge of the block here. And I can really layer it in here where I want things to be dark. Again, it's nice to do the, the two different directions. And these exaggerated differences between lights and darks will start to make things look real. Um, so if I were to work on another set of these and kind of show you how I, how I did this, if I start with this button here. Um, looking at the photo, I see that uh, you can almost use this to kind of define the the top a little bit, the ellipse, kind of go around it with the with the dark. And then I see that we had, well, it's, it's really pretty dark here. So I'm just going to start layering this in. a little harder through there. Let's try some of the purple in there. Now there is, uh, let's do the shadow. So the shadow is going to come down. That one hits that button, but mine's not going to, that's okay. And then I'm going to bring it in. It looks like it hits about in there. So now I'm going to put in this shadow of the button. can go back with the black and add even more darkness into that edge. Bring it right down to the bottom of the button there. And I'm going to fade it kind of into that shadow a little bit. There. Let's start to look real. Alright, so I'm going to stop this, bring it back when I have more of these done, and talk about finishing this Lego all right, so I did that same technique on all the buttons on the top, and uh, pretty happy with the way this looks. I just have the, this last one to finish with the black, just adding the darkest darks in here. pretty good. So I can use this black and uh, add a little bit of shadow to like this edge, the separation of this edge, maybe a little bit in, right into this side. And darken up this corner a little bit. Kind of help define it. Again, go in both directions there. Kind of go along this bottom edge and it looks like there's a little bit of shadow kind of on the table so I'm going to put in a little bit of that
And you can kind of soften color pencil the same way you can regular pencil by just kind of smudging it a little bit. Smudge those shadows. And there you have it. Realistic Lego block. I'm happy with that. Sign it. Another 2021. Whoops. <laughs> uh, I was going to just do this. Oh well. All right, 2020, 2021. I messed up on the date. But there you have it, the realistic Lego block and colored pencil. All right, guys, until next time.